two-dimensional crystals. It's possible to make crystalline solids that are only one layer of atoms thick. Such two-dimensional crystals can be created by depositing atoms on a very flat surface. Part A. If the atoms in such a two-dimensional crystal can move only within the plane of the crystal, what will be its molar heat capacity near room temperature? Give your answer as a multiple of universal gas constant R and in joules per mole Kelvin. Part B. At very low temperatures, will the molar heat capacity of a two-dimensional crystal be greater than, less than, or equal to the result you found in Part A? Explain why. Now, we have to visualize a two-dimensional crystal. So, uh, you can see that we cannot talk about translations of the atoms or rotations of the atoms in this case. They're uh, bound to, uh, by these bonds uh, between them. And as you can see on the XY plane, uh, the only thing they can do is to oscillate about their equilibrium positions. All right, so let's start by uh, noting that uh, the atoms are restricted to move on the xy plane. So let's assume that the atoms are restricted to move on the x, y plane. Okay, so uh, considering the vibrations of these uh, atoms about their equilibrium positions, uh, we can write the internal energy of the system as having contributions from uh, kinetic energy during vibrations, one half m v x square bar plus one half k x x square bar. So that's basically one harmonic oscillator here. Uh, and then we can have one half m v y square bar plus one half k y y square bar and for capital N atoms we have to multiply it by capital N. Now using equipartition theorem I have uh, four quadratic terms uh, four degrees of freedom each contributing one half kbt and capital N atoms therefore I see that I have two n kbt as the internal energy or to number of moles universal gas constant times temperature. Now, if I want to calculate the molar heat capacity or molar specific heat, it is one over the number of moles, uh, the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature at constant number of moles, it's equal to two R. So that's the answer to part A of the problem. I only have vibrational degrees of freedom. Uh, therefore, um, for two uh, axes, x and y axes, uh, we will have a contribution of 2r. All right, so uh, I note here that for a crystalline solid, unlike the gas molecules that are free to move, uh, we have only vibrational vibrational degrees of freedom. All right. Now part B is asking me what happens at uh, very low temperatures. So what will happen is that these vibrational states uh, will not be excited or uh, the phonon modes will be frozen and this will cause a decrease in CV. So at very low 
temperatures the vibrational excited states in solid state physics we call these phonon modes these will be frozen and this causes a decrease in the molar specific heat at constant volume as temperature goes to zero. So as we lose these phonon modes, this will cause a decrease in CV. So that's the argument. All right, so in this problem, we've considered a two-dimensional crystal uh, which can be formed by depositing atoms on a flat surface. Uh, no, noting that they're restricted to move in the plane of the crystal, we want to know the molar heat capacity or uh, molar specific heat at constant volume in terms of R and we want to know what happens at very low temperatures. Uh, what uh, Does it increase, decrease or is the same? Uh, so we have a model for a two-dimensional crystal here. The atoms can only vibrate about their equilibrium positions on X and Y axis. They cannot uh, the, uh, rotate about a, an axis that goes uh, through uh, the middle of a bond, for example. Uh, so we cannot have that degree of freedom and they cannot translate freely. So we can only consider vibrations. Now, if you write the vibrational kinetic energy, one half mvx square bar, where I'm assuming that each atom has mass m here, um, plus one half kx x square bar for uh, vibrations on the x-axis, and then we have the corresponding term for vibrations on the y-axis and capital N total number of atoms. So each quadratic term contributes uh, one half kT. I'm using equipartition uh, theorem. Each independent degree of freedom giving a quadratic contribution to energy uh, will give half kT uh, for uh, the average value of the energy so we i have four quadratic terms multiplied by n two capital n kt or two uh, number of moles universal gas constant times temperature so i take a derivative of this with respect to temperature and divide it by n i obtain 2r for molar uh, specific heat at very low temperatures, these vibrational states may not be excited. Phonon modes can be frozen. That means uh, we should ex expect a decrease in CV as temperature goes to zero.